Another, here's another common type of stat question where you'll have to use your calculator. You're going to put this into your uh, data into your calculator and then it's going to get you the information that you want. It says all members of the athletic club have annual shot put competition. These are the distances of the shots thrown. President of the club wishes to test whether this data provide evidence that distances achieved have increased since the 2015 when the mean result of the club was 12.4. So in 2015 it was 12.4. So that's what we're testing against. And we're seeing if all these are significantly higher. You may assume that the distance achieved follow a normal distribution with mean and variance and that the membership has not changed. There aren't more people. So what we want to do is state a suitable hypothesis. So the null hypothesis is that mu being 12.4 that my alternative that it state that it's still 12.4 that the mean hasn't changed. So this year eh, not not any better than 2015. But the alternative hypothesis is is that my new mu is going to be greater than 12.4. That's what I'm shooting for. They give a reason why a t-test is appropriate. Uh, variance is unknown. Okay. The degrees of freedom is going to be 10 items minus 1 for the sample to get 9. The critical region for testing at each of the 5% is if you go inverse t-test of 0.05, I'm going to get 1.83. And when I go inverse t-test of 0 0.10, 0 0.10, Uh, that's going to give me uh, 1.38. Okay, so what we're going to look is look at is when is the t value greater than or equal to 1.83? That's for the five percent. When is the t test value greater than 1.38 for this one? So 10% has a lower number than, uh, than the 5% because there's more that fit into the greater than 5% than there are that fit into the greater than 10%. The unbiased estimates. Okay, I think what you do here, and this, this I wasn't able to find, but I think what you want to do there is you want to use your calculator and putting in this data, then crank out the unbiased estimates. That's the one with the n minus 1s built in. And so you sum up all the x's, and then it'll divide by n minus 1. But if you put it in, it'll just give it to you. And the, the mu for that is 13.18 and the variance for that is 1.531 squared or uh, 2.34. Okay. The value of the test statistic, so the t-test statistic is going to be just like the normal 13.18 minus 12.4. That's x average minus mu. But then when we take the, when we divide by mu, it's actually going to be mu or mu uh, delta 1.531 and then divided by the square root of n. And that test statistic, you want the formula, is x average minus 
is going to be equal to, this is what I got, 1.61. Now 1.61 is interesting because when I take these two here and here, and I put one, there's my purple, my favorite color, 1.83, And go over here. 1.83 goes here, and 1.61 goes here. Now we want the t value. This was for uh, 1.38. Okay. So this was for the 10% confidence, and this was for the 5% confidence. And so what we want to do is look at what was our test statistic for this data, and it was 1.61. 1 1.61 is in between 1.38 and 1.83, and this is how we use statistics to verify real data. It's a tremendous tool. And for this one, now, once we've done this, the test statistic, we've compared it to 10% and 5%. Now we state the conclusion. And the conclusion is we accept H1 at the 5% level, but not the 10%. Yes, so um, I was looking at this carefully. We do accept the null hypothesis at the 5% level. So there's a 5% chance that there's no difference in the means, okay? So that's kind of unlikely, okay? And I'm going to check that one more time. It says, so as I'm reading this, it says we accept the null hypothesis that the mean is 12.4, and it's still 12.4. There's at the 5% level. Uh, there's not a 10% chance, though, that we accept it. 